Now that you men have reviewed the lesson, you'll make the inspection before operation. Sergeant, take these three men with you. The rest of you, follow me. All right, men, let's start with this truck over here. First, look at the ground underneath the truck. If any leaks, oil, fuel, or water have developed, that's where they'll show up. Never move a vehicle until the leakage has been corrected. Next, check the amount of cooling liquid. See that the air passages in the radiator are all open and that the fan belt has proper tension. Then pull out the bayonet gauge, and check the amount of engine oil in the crankcase. If it is low, add more oil. Well, this is all right. Look over the engine, the loose parts, or loose electrical connections. The gas tank must be filled so that the gas is visible in the neck, thereby ensuring complete fueling and providing a rough check on the gas tank gauge. OK, Adams, get in the cab and prepare to start the engine. Now what? Well, first we see that the parking brake is set. And make sure that all of the gear shift levers and the power takeoffs are in neutral. Check. Then set the hand throttle about one third out so that the engine operates at twice its idling speed. Set the choke, but do not use it excessively. Then. Turn on the ignition and disengage the clutch before stepping on the starter. As soon as the engine is turning smoothly in neutral, let up on the clutch. It is important to warm up the engine. The engine is properly warmed up when upon acceleration there is no backfiring. And when the oil pressure needle remains below the maximum reading on the oil pressure gauge scale. OK, Adams, what's next? Then check the fuel gauge and the functioning of all of the other dashboard instruments. Oh, while you're still in the cab, check to see that the fire extinguisher is full and in place. Check the windshield wipers. And that you have an accident report card. and a vehicle driver's permit. What's next? Even I can figure out what comes next, blow the horn. And check the lights, including the stoplight. Then as the engine warms up, shut down on the choke and continue the inspection before operation. OK, Sergeant? Right. Keep going.
Of course, you listen to hear if anything sounds loose or noisy in the engine. And make sure that the fan is operating correctly. Continue your inspection before operation by checking over the steering linkage and springs for loose, bent, broken, or missing parts. All the tires, including the spares, must be inspected for full inflation with an air pressure gauge. Fannin, you check the rear tires. Strickland, you check the tires on that side. While you're up at the front, check the poppet latch on the winch to be sure that the plunger is down in the proper hole so that the winch cable will not unwind. And also check the front axle for any evidence of shifting or lubricant leakage. Nice work, Adams. Fannin, I'll give you and Strickland a chance later to show some of the things you've learned from your manual and our blackboard review this morning. See that the gas cans are full and secure. Check and secure the tools on the Pioneer equipment bracket. Check the springs, torque rods, and the rest of the bogey for any damage and loose or missing parts. If there are any trailing devices, be sure that the pendle is locked. At the same time, inspect the toolbox to account for all the tools issued. Be sure to examine the wheel nuts to see that they are tight. And last, recheck the surface underneath the vehicle for any water, oil, or gasoline leakage that may have occurred after the engine started. Now I'll check the clutch, transmission, steering gear, and brakes by moving the vehicle a few feet see that the basic controls are operating properly. Now that truck over there has been inspected and the engine warmed up. It is set up on blocks to let you manipulate the controls and get the feel of it before you drive on the drill field. All right, Strickland, you try it first. Then Adams and Fannin, you'll try it. First, you set the handbrake. Disengage the clutch. Turn on the key. Step on the starter. Shift into first, release the handbrake, feed her some gas, re-engage the clutch. All right, Adams, you take a crack at it.
Shut her down, Fallon. Now I think you all are ready to drive the truck we finished inspecting a few minutes ago. All right, Strickland. Get in, let's see if you can manage it. But don't slouch, Strickland. To assume the correct position, sit erect, without stiffness, squarely behind the steering wheel. Head erect, eyes looking to the front. Hands on opposite sides of the steering wheel, on a horizontal line generally through the center of the wheel. Grasp the steering wheel rim firmly, but without tenseness. Both feet flat on the floorboards. Except when actually manipulating the accelerator, clutch and brake pedals, or the starter switch. The feet should be placed on the control pedals only when the pedals are to be operated. Riding the brake and clutch pedals results in rapid and unnecessary wear. Uh, next, adjust both rear view mirrors. All right, Strickland, start her up. You men stand by and watch. You'll get your turn later. You've got everything in the right order, Strickland. Only let the clutch come in smooth and feed the gas to it easy. That's why we made you try it out in the blocks a moment ago, so you would get the feel of the clutch. Try it again. Shift into neutral, then third, and re-engage the clutch as you slowly increase the pressure on the accelerator. Be sure the engine is turning over fast enough to pick up the load. Now I want to show you how to double clutch. It's pretty hard to shift from a higher to a lower gear without clashing the gear team. But you can get away from that grinding noise and the damage to the gear by double clutching. Now to shift from third to second gear by double clutching, disengage the clutch and shift into neutral, at the same time taking your foot off the accelerator. Engage the clutch and speed up the engine until its speed approximately matches the forward speed of the vehicle. Then disengage the clutch a second time and shift into second. Then engage the clutch you depress the accelerator. Well, there are two things you're going to have to practice. Smooth gear shifting and double clutching. Double clutching requires practice and a sense of timing that you can develop through practice so that you can hear and feel the speed and performance of the engine in relation to the movement of the truck. Now, next, we'll begin our inspection during operation. In your inspection during operation, be sure to listen for any sounds that may indicate trouble in the engine or running gear. Also, watch for any abnormal readings on your instrument panel. The ammeter should show a charge when the engine is running faster than its idling speed, except when the battery is completely charged. The oil pressure gauge should stay comparatively steady on 40. If it fluctuates rapidly, drops down or fails to register, stop the engine at once, or you may burn out a bearing or otherwise harm the engine. The water temperature gauge normally reads between 140 degrees and 180 degrees. If it reaches 200 degrees, stop and check your water. If the temperature should reach 212 degrees, or the boiling point, you should locate and correct the trouble before proceeding. Uh, check the fuel gauge to make sure that you are not running low on gas. If you have air brakes on the truck, don't let the air pressure go under 70 pounds. Never operate a vehicle after trouble is developed, except when ordered. 
Don't force a disabled vehicle. All you do is to make the trouble worse. Got it? Good. Now we'll pick up Adams and Phantom. Now we'll get acquainted with the transfer assembly shifting lever. Remember, don't attempt to change the transfer assembly gear shift lever when the vehicle is more than barely moving. Is that clear? Yes. To use the lower gear ratios for steep climbs, cross-country driving, or off-the-road driving, the first thing is to engage the front axle drive. Then shift the transfer assembly into low. And the rest of the driving operation is exactly the same as when using the main transmission. To make the front wheel throw out a smooth and easy operation, observe the following points. When the engine is pulling, you let up on the accelerator when you shift. a brake, increase the amount of gas when you shift. Now I want to show you the correct way to use the brakes. See that trailer ahead? Well, the idea is not to see how close you can come to it before you put on the brakes. First, I take my foot off the accelerator far enough in advance so that the compression of the engine itself will help to slow down the vehicle. Then instead of jamming on the brake, just apply it intermittently with increasing pressure until the vehicle comes to a gradual stop. Always remember to disengage the clutch before actually stopping or before the engine begins to jerk against the slow revolutions of the driving wheels. You get your maximum braking effect before the wheels lock, not after they've locked and begun skidding. Let's see what you remember from your manual and blackboard review. Let's suppose that we have been driving in column and that this is a scheduled halt. You are the driver. What do you do? I'll make the regular inspections at the hall. Right. Go ahead and make it. The inspection at the halt is similar to the inspection before operation. Not only do you repeat each and every step of the other inspection, but it is also required that you Look out for rocks that may be between the tires. And then, because you are only required to use the air pressure gauge once a day, push your foot against the side of all tires to assure inflation. Then you feel the wheel hubs, brake bands, and gear cases to see that they are not overheated. Anything else? No, that's fine. Except if you do run into any trouble in inspection at the halt, you report it immediately to your chief of section or mechanic. Next, I'll show you some tricks on how to back and park a truck. Backing and parking require practice. To park a truck between two others, begin by driving the vehicle to a position about two feet away and opposite the vehicle in front of the parking space and in a line parallel to the curb. Just before stopping and at the slowest speed, cut your wheel into the right so that when the vehicle finally stops, the front wheels will be in the correct position to begin the second part of the parking maneuver. Now continue to cut the wheel to the right and begin backing until the vehicle is about halfway into the parking space. Then swing the steering wheel smoothly to the left and continue backing until you have reached the extreme end of the parking space. Complete the parking of the vehicle by turning the wheel a little to the right and moving forward a few feet as you see here. 
Make sure there is sufficient room between your vehicle and the others so you can get out. When parking downhill, ease the front wheel into the curb to prevent slipping. Don't force the tires into the curbing, as this damages the sidewalls and may force the front wheels out of alignment. Similarly, when parking on an upgrade, ease either the back of the rear tire against the curb or the back of the front tire against the curb. To back the vehicle into a restricted space, anticipate the direction of the backward movement by swinging the wheels in the last part of the forward motion. Then continue to swing the wheels while backing. Be sure you can see what you're doing. If your vision is obstructed, have a dismounted man guide you. Now I want you men to watch a driver back and park a truck with a towed load. In backing the towed gun to the right, the driver first manipulates his vehicle as though beginning a turn to the left. This action starts the gun moving toward the driver's right. In backing the towed gun to the left, the driver first manipulates his vehicle as though beginning a turn to the right. This action starts the gun moving toward the left. Thus, the careful driver is able to back a towed load into a narrow space. All right, men, this is the last job we'll take up today. You men watch how this driver makes his inspection after operation. This is one of the most important inspections because it gives opportunity for the trouble to be located at a time when the mechanics can work on it and correct it without laying up the vehicle. This inspection includes all of the ones you've already made, plus tightening any loose bolts, servicing, or making any replacements required. <laughs>